Hello, everyone. Do you guys have all your tools? Oh, we have more countries. We have Egypt, Brazil, Dubai, and India again. Hello. Um, so tools, they were in the email, but just the thing I'm going to start with is compass, ruler, pencil. Um, I have some watercolors. In terms of the colors, you can paint exactly like the plate. You could create new colors. Um, what else? Like literally the colors are whatever you have. Even if you don't have watercolors, you could do something else. It's absolutely up to you. I think you all got your handouts. It's quite basic, but the plates are nice and easy. So they will be a joy to paint. Hello, Pakistan and Watford. How exciting. I'm so excited for today's class. We have 300 people who signed up today. Hi, Joanna from East London. Um, oh, and we have Italy. We have lots of cool things happening. Are we going to trace a drawing to copy on the watercolor paper like previous workshop? So that's a great question. And it's absolutely up to you. Hi, Alessandra. So it's up to you if you want to draw directly on. Oh, we have motorcycles passing, by the way. Just ignore them. Um, you can directly paint on, draw and paint on the watercolor paper. It's not a very intense geometric thing. So it's up to you. Erasing things on your watercolor paper before painting sometimes impacts the surface. So a lot of people tend to finalize their drawing perfectly and then transfer it. So I will leave that up to you. Um, you don't have paints, but you have some colored pencils. Perfect. You could use those. Um, it's all about just like enjoying yourself. So you can use these later on. You can see the technique of watercolor and apply it to your work. I was just reviewing some of the tools, ruler, um, compass, pencil, eraser. Eraser is going to be very important because this is the thing with a lot of bimorphic patterns. We draw something, then we realize our hand didn't do the exact job that we want. So you erase it and you draw it again. So never be disheartened when the flower shape that you want is not the exact one. It's fine. That's what erasers are there for. You can just erase it. And I have a brand new one actually, but I've never used green one. I'm sure it has a specific purpose, but the purpose for it today is going to be erasing my pencil marks. Perfect. If you don't have a compass, yes, draw a round plate. It's not, we're not doing a geometric pattern. So a circle of some kind will be fine. I'm going to try and make our circle as accurate as possible. So I'm using a compass. So it's absolutely up to you. Again, it's just it's a really nice way of recreating some of the beautiful plates they have at the Leighton House Museum. And hopefully when it opens, you must go and compare your drawing to the plates. All right, I'm going to switch my screens. Okay, <clears throat> let's start. Are we drawing straight? Okay, I'm going to answer this and I'll tell you all about it. We might have to write that up and I don't know, there is no pinning option in pin it, <laughs> so we all know. It's up to you if you want to draw directly on your watercolor paper. The more you erase things, the more you impact the surface of your watercolor paper. The safest option is to draw separately and then trace it and then transfer it to watercolor paper. But I'm leaving that creative option for you. You can decide. I personally will draw right into normal uh, watercolor paper just because I don't feel like tracing. But for better results, definitely do it separately and then paint it. Is that good? Yeah. All right. 
Um, I think I answered that question. Let's start. So we're going to do the first plate first that has the cypress tree. Ooh. Okay, too far, too far. Uh -huh. All right. So I'm going to gauge where the middle is on my paper just by eyeing it. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line right in the middle. If you're not using a compass, you can do your circle wherever you like. I just want it because this design has symmetry, right? There is a line right in the middle and then the design is repeated. So I want us to kind of give ourselves the best possible symmetry, okay? So. Hello from Argentina. All right, so starting with a horizontal line right in the middle of my page. And then I'm going to open up my compass for six centimeters. Make it slightly nicer to look at okay and then so radius is let me show you six centimeters all right and then we're going to put my compass right in the middle right in the middle of my line and then i'm going to draw a circle so basically this is going to be my plate this first circle okay but just to have perfect symmetry, I'm going to draw two circles on the side. So you see where my line cut the circle? This will be my point right here. So this is my second point. First point was in the middle of the line and I drew a circle. Second point is where the line cuts the circle and I'm gonna do one circle there. And then it's the other point over there where I'm going to do another circle. And I'm doing all of this just because I want a really lovely vertical line in the middle. So these are just extras. Okay. Once you have your three circles, by the way, as you can see, my circle was not complete on the side over there, but that's fine because I don't need that much of that circle. I actually didn't have to draw the whole circle. I could have just done a little mark, but I like seeing the circles. Okay, so from this point where the two circles intersect, I'm going to just do a line on top. And then from the other side, right here, I'm going to do another line. So basically, I'm just forming an X. Is any of this necessary? Not 100%, you could just do it without, but I just want a really nice vertical line. So I'm gonna go to the bottom again, right here where the two circles intersect. And then I'm gonna make a line and then go to the other side where the two circles intersect and make another line. All of this, so I've done all of this to get my lovely vertical line. So you want your vertical line to go by point number one, the center, and point number two. All right. Well, there are delays in the video. Um, I don't know how to fix that. Should we just hope it fixes itself? I don't know. It was fine a minute ago, right? Um, Ruth, what didn't you see? The line? Basically, I just drew this line. I have my point that I marked between the circles. So I have this point, I have the center and I have the other point. So I just drew a line, that's all.
All right. I hope that cleared it. Okay. Literally, this is all we needed to do in terms of geometry. We just wanted to have a circle that is divided. Um, Ishel, I think you need to maybe change the brightness of your screen because these lines, they are dark. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go through this very quickly again. We drew a circle and then there was this point where we drew another circle. Then there, this point where we drew the other circle, okay? So then we had three circles and a line. And from this point where the two circles intersect, we made a mark with our compass and then again, we did another mark and by these two marks we got an x and we did the same thing at the bottom and because i had these great marks i could draw a vertical line and so i did a line all the way from the top going by the center to the other point and that's all and now i want to draw another circle so my plate is right in the middle but i'm giving myself a lovely border so just put your radius, your compass in the middle and then expand your radius. And this is absolutely up to you. We're not gonna do a design for the border. We're just literally going to have a border, which is a slightly bigger circle. All right. So that's our construction. I hope that makes sense and it's dark enough and you can see it. And now we can enjoy designing our plates. So we're gonna make it similar to the original plates, okay? But there are certain things that we can't control, which is our hand and how it draws certain shapes. Hello. Can you guys hear me now? I don't know what just happened. Zoom had a moment. That's what we're saying. And we're going to go back to our beautiful drawing that we haven't even started. We literally drew the plate. And now, yes, it's back to the exact point. Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. OK. I'll leave it. I shall leave it. Okay, how is everybody? You've got, have you got your plates? That is the most important question. And I will put the chat right. Okay, if you were in here right from the start and you missed the circle, I don't know what happened of how you repeated your circle, have a circle in the middle with a line. That's all we need. That's all we need. And then we're gonna start designing, all right? So it's not, this was just extra to have it super accurate. You don't really need it. I, if I keep repeating this circle, we will not get anywhere. We want to draw the actual plate because we have two plates and then we're gonna draw, uh, not draw paint on top of this. Okay, so if you, know um, the picture that you have seen. It has a cypress tree right in the middle. And then we have about three flowers. Uh, yes, Alessandra, the answer is yes. I just extended my radius a tad, just like a tiny bit. You could do however radius you want for the outer circle. It's just, there's just a border. It's just to make it pretty. So first things first, 
we are going to start with our tree. And our tree starts right from the beginning of the line. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that we're drawing the tree as a half and not a full tree. So whatever we're doing on this section will be repeated later. Okay. So let's do the tree and it's a simple shape. So it will probably change when I do it versus when you do it. I'm giving the tree like up until like here because there is like a tiny flower at the bottom, okay? So we're gonna do our tree. We're just gonna give it the tree trunk right here. And remember, there will be quite a lot of erasing because you wanna get it right. It will help if you have the images of the plates, but again, not necessary. And then I will stop about there. So the tree trunk is about two centimeters and a half. Okay. Okay. How many people can see the screen versus how many people can't see the screen? Because I'm drawing it really dark. So I'm still, I still haven't drawn the body of the tree, if that helps. I literally just did this, this slide. Perfect. Um, so in that case, I would suggest checking the brightness of your own screen because that could make a difference. All right, okay, moving on. So I'm drawing the outline of my tree. Okay, so I've drawn the outline and it is just kind of like, it looks like a curved arrow. Okay, so we have the tree trunk, we have the body of the tree. And the body of the tree goes from the tree trunk all the way to the top. Okay. And the inside of the tree has details. But before you do any details, I'm just going to mark the placement of things, all right? Under my tree, I have a lovely flower. Again, I'm drawing it in half. I'm starting with a little curve that is very close to the central line and then another curve kind of coming on the side of it. I'm not going all the way to the bottom. I'm leaving a tiny bit. So at the bottom, I'm going to draw a leaf. And my leaf has a tiny curve to it, okay? And then another leaf under it. Okay. So now we filled our line. And we started doing with the trunk of the tree, the body of the tree, the flower under the tree, and the two leaves right at the bottom. So my line should be filled with these shapes. Now we want to place the flowers that we have. So we have a little flower that is coming out of the tree. You see, this is my midline, right? I'm gonna go above my midline by a little bit, say about two centimeters, and I'm gonna extend a little line. So on this line, I'm gonna come back to it and I'm going to do a little flower. Okay, and then there is a really interesting long flower that fills up most of the space on the side. So I'm gonna go from the leaves, the two that I've done, and then I'm gonna try and maintain 
my curved line and it's going to fill that space. Okay, so up until you see where I place my line, just kind of above that. And then I'm just bringing in the stem or the branch of the, tr uh, the flower all the way to the bottom. All right. So try and make it a bit curved. And so mine wasn't super curved. So now it's about making it a little curved. And I ended up with three lines. So I'm going to be correcting and erasing some of my lines. Okay. Turn up the top here. And basically all you're doing is filling that space with that line. All right. After that line, we're having to add one more flower. And this flower curves, which is my tulip. It kind of curves. So imagine if you're doing like a hook, like a fish hook. And it goes from the leaf all the way to kind of middle of this flower. Okay. So now that we have the outlines, we can start working on the flowers or even the tree. Let's do the flowers first. So I'm gonna go to the first flower. It's actually a little bit for, uh, like um, facing the top. So I'm doubling my line. You see how I had one line? Now I have two lines. And then from there, I'm going to go slightly up just here and do the center. So my center is literally a circle. And then I'm going to do five petals. One, two, three, four, and five. And it's a very simple flower. Okay. And then I want to work on my bigger flower here which starts very close to this flower. And I start with like the stem, which is three pointed triangles almost. So I'm working on it. All right. And then I'm gonna do another three triangle stem on top of it as well. Okay, and then I'll do little corrections to kind of make it move to where I want it. So I'm moving it slightly. And then I'll come back and double this line where the flower is coming from. So I'm doubling it all the way to the end. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's happening, why the video is lagging. Like it's literally the UK's internet. But I'm trying not to put my hand on the drawing like at all. <laughs> so it's like I'm drawing a line and moving it really quickly. So it's not, it's not there. All right, back to the flower. And then it has a curved center on top. Okay. And then I'm gonna do my fun petals. So in the middle, because it's a curved flower. So the flower is curving with me. So in the middle, I'm gonna do a line. I'm actually might change the curvature of my flower a little. Okay, and then I'm going to do, it's like almost like a full circle. So like circle, 
circle on the other side, circle on top of it. Circle there. Another tiny, it's no longer a circle, it's like an oval. It's like bunny ears. Okay. And then on top, there is like a tiny crown. You guys, it's like the most awkward movements for my hand. So it's like, I fixed my hand to the other side so it doesn't lag or it doesn't cover the drawing while it lags. Okay. Caroline, um, the alternative is to look at the handout, um, which has the thing, or to look at the original plates that shows you the flower. Maybe that helps while you're listening. Okay, my flower looks a bit weird because I haven't added any detailing to it. So to detail the sides of my flower, it looks like a little petal curling. And then I'm going to do the same and the same on top. And to the side, up on the other side. Okay. If you can show us a reference as you draw each one, that would help immediately. What do you mean a reference? How about the handout? Or you mean like something other than the handout? If, if, that, if it helps, it's the side flower on the plate. Okay, so Sarah, you have the handout, right? So I would suggest um, opening that and looking into it. On the handout, this is literally stop. Um, you don't have to have it printed. Look at it on your screen. That's literally what I'm doing. Like all I'm doing is I'm looking at the plates. And that's it. I can't have two screens. Okay. If you are struggling, I would say draw a flower, any flower that includes three petals right on top of each other. Okay. Now to our favorite flower, which is the tulip. And the tulip is literally my favorite one to draw. So I'm doubling the line of my stem or the stalk of the flower. And then it's curved. So you see how it's curving and it's taking up so much space. This is my point. This is exactly what I want. And then I'm gonna go track back a little and do three circles next to each other. And then I'm going to draw the shape of my tulip, which is also three elongated petals. Think of them as leaves. Think of them as three leaves sitting next to each other. Okay. Their tulip is much skinnier than the tulip I just created. So I'm going to put my tulip on a little diet and make it very neat and thin. I don't know why that's completely stopped now. 
Oh, thank you, Jenna. That is nice of you to say. It's a little, it's a little on the chunky side. It had a bit extra chocolate cake. Hold on. Oh, let me stop this. And redo the share and hope that it will stop lagging. Like literally, if all the video is going fine, why would it lag? Question for the Zoom wizards. It might be protesting, who knows? Who knows? All right, let's share this again. My ambition of doing two plates is just disappearing. <laughs> but we might, we might be able to do the second plates as well. Okay, Zoom, work with me. Oh, there we go. Is it less laggy? Is it more laggy? No one knows. It's literally the same. Um, but I tried. I tried for you. <clears throat> okay, let's put the chat up just in case you guys have questions. All right. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm a bit nervous on your behalf of the lagginess of life, but literally can't help it. I can't. Zoom just hates me today. Is there a name for the flower we drew before the tulip? I was trying to kind of recognize which flower it might be. And I have a suspicion that it's, what's that other nice flower? Coronation, is it coronation? I need to remember flower names. But it's definitely based on a real flower. But I just, my flower knowledge is sad. But that's your challenge. Find the name of the flower that we've done. Suze, maybe, maybe. I mean, I won't be surprised. Okay. And now that we finally have some flowers, we can add some leaves. Actually, there's one little tiny flower on the side here. It's so cute. It's literally one, two, three in a circle. That's all. They're right on top. Okay. So if you want to add that in. Oh my God, it's not lagging. Look, I'm moving at the same time. I don't know, maybe it's just my screen. I'm not going to get too excited for this. On top of the tulip, we have two pointed elongated leaves that have a little bit of a belly, a tiny one right here. And then I have another one on the side, filling up the space. And this is when you can, your, uh, you can add your own spin into these flowers by drawing the petals or the leaves in a way that feels more comfortable to you. Okay. And for the tulip, we have another leaf that fills in the space. This one is a little interesting because it does a zigzag or not a zigzag, just like a curvy line. It's like a snake. It's like a snake and then it goes, goes back. And it has like a sharp edge, a little tip. Okay. And then we'll add a circle right here. And it's like, I feel like it's definitely looking so much better the second we add some leaves. 
And then I have another leaf that kind of goes almost under the tulip. Imagine like an, a hand almost extending like to hold it. And then I have two more leaves at the bottom. And you will notice that my leaves are not exactly like the original leaves. This is just how my hand likes to draw leaves. Okay, Helen, would you tell us the plate design belongs to which country? It is a Turkish reproduction of an original plate that was already in Leighton House Museum. So Leighton himself like had lots of amazing plates and tiles that he collected from the Middle East. So he has Syrian tiles, these are Turkish plates, but some of them broke. So they commissioned modern artists, they gave them the original images and they were like, oh, why don't you do some of these so we can still have the essence of the original ones. James, definitely, they, although it's like, there are so many tulips, I like on everything, but I haven't seen natural tulips in Turkey, but Maybe it's just my lack of visiting tulip farms. I need to look into it. Anywho, <clears throat> we have a lovely leaf right here, hiding that little, it's kind of like where the tiny flower is nestling itself. Oh, there is one on the side of that flower as well. I'm gonna make it a little bigger so it, houses the flower nicely. Okay, and then I have one more on the side. Oh, which season would you say is the tulip season then? So we can all plan our trip. Um, I kind of put my flower a little too far, so I'm just going to add the leaves under it instead of on top of it. Spring! Okay, that's it, you guys. Spring, we shall go to the tulip place and draw fresh tulips right there. Ah, wild tulips. Ooh. I like that. Okay, now I'm going to go to my tree that I have slightly ignored as I was doing my flowers. First thing, I'm gonna give my tea, my tea, my tree a little center. Okay. It's like imagine, like when you know when you get the chocolate truffles. And there is like this yummy center. And sometimes there's like a strawberry inside the truffle. This is literally the center of the tree. It's a strawberry truffle chocolate tree. So that's a window into my mind right there. And we're going to add leaves. It's a very charming way of kind of doing the, the tree. We are doing these guys. So leaf, 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 etc. Um, I'm not gonna do them in, in any pattern. No, no. So we are just adding the leaves. They are small. Some of them go to the center. So these go to the center and then other ones kind of like open up. Some of them are going just upwards. So in that, it, it kind of like the tree skin and the background, they both look like fish scale to me. Is that what you were reminded of? Or were you reminded of something else? So I'm gonna do all my edges first. And they are just going upwards. You can take time with this. You could do them quickly, however you like. 
gonna open it a little bit more. Dragon scale, yes, I could see that for sure. And then it closes up there. And then I'm just going with them. Another um, way of doing this is to just leave it as the body of the tree and then add these when you are painting. So it's like paint the whole thing green. And then you could just outline these shapes. It makes it so much quicker. Or you could just do them with a lighter color on top. There we go. And then I'm gonna put a line for my center. Okay. Oh, pineapples. Actually, it is very close to pineapples. I can see that as well. Once you are done with your tree, you can start adding like the half circles in the background. And as well, they don't really have a specific system where they're going. They're just like connected to the circle. It's like, think of the tiles on a swimming pool. That's the vibe I got. Or it could look like waves. So I'm just literally um, putting them around. <clears throat> and then filling the space fully. They are all like facing forward. And that helps you draw them. Okay. I'm just to kind of slowly filling in the space. And again, this is like another thing that you could just do while you're painting rather in the drawing stage. Like for example, we could have just painted the whole thing a lighter blue and then just put these lines with um, a darker blue. So it saves us a little bit of the process. Ta-da, how's yours looking? Tell me, tell me everything. I'm assuming it's fabulous. All right. As soon as you have your half of the plate, yay, it's so good to hear it. Grab some tracing paper. I don't want you to do this now, but I wanna show you how it's done. So you can complete the plate later. Basically, you are going to draw the whole thing all over again, the whole half with all the details that you want to include. And I'm gonna do this super quickly to show you what to expect. And when you're doing this, it's like sometimes you can correct as well. If you're already drawing on drafting paper, you're going to do this twice. If you are drawing on the watercolor paper right away, you are going to do this once. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'll just do at least a tree, okay? So imagine, fast forward, like, you know, in the cooking shows when 
you fast forward into them baking the whole cake. Fast forward to this being completely traced. You're going to flip your tracing paper. You want pencil side down. And because we have a great circle that has been divided wonderfully, we are gonna just connect it as nice as can be. And then you're gonna draw it again. And by the power of magic and graphite, your drawing will transfer into the paper underneath it. And I shall show you. But now that I've started the tree, part of me really wants to finish it. Okay. All those dragon pineapple scales. So many of them. All right. Ta da! And there you have it the magic of symmetry. Thank you so much, Sebastian and Hannah and everybody. Thank you, thank you. I hope yours is looking adorable. Thank you, Joanna. Um, and then basically continue, continue doing this. But since we are pressed for time, like literally we could have just done one plate today. But I felt like you must want two plates. Do you agree? <laughs> Of course you want to do two plates because they're slightly different. So this one is based on symmetry, where the other one is a complete composition. And when it's a complete composition, it has like different style of working. Well, basically you just ignore the symmetry and do whatever you want. But I really like the other plates. Oh, Jenna, but that makes it really nice if they are all tiny, because that means when you are painting it, it will have that little miniature quality. So that is quite pretty. So it works. It still works. Okay. Do we have any questions about this design? And if you like that also works. Oh, I'm so happy that your plates are looking good. And if they're not looking amazing at this stage, don't you worry, they will look so much better when you paint it. And this is basically the thing when we see a lot of uh, patterns, especially with floral patterns that are much easier to replicate. So I would definitely advise you to go to museums and just sketch out the collections that they have, because why not? It's such a great practice. And sometimes it feels daunting in the beginning, but then it's actually easy. Like those lovely plates. Okay. In a minute, we're going to have our break. And it's only a five to 10 minute break, which will allow you to either continue working on this or you want to grab a tea or anything that you like. Um, so let me switch up my screen. So this is my drawing. If you want, you can do a quick <clears throat> screenshot of this, but you already have the handout. You already have the beautiful reference plate itself. Like you don't need the sad drawing. So it's up to you. It's up to you, but I'm gonna count to 10 and then I will switch screens. Okay, so you guys have five to 10 minutes to grab something to drink, to finish your drawing, to do whatever you like. And I shall see you very, very soon. Hello, I am back. It's been, well, three minutes and a half because my thing decided to kick me out again. <laughs> no one knows the power of Zoom. All right, how are you feeling? Is your, are you ready for the second plate? 
I'm going to share the other screen now. I had a very nutritious chocolate snack to keep me going. I hope you did the same. Woo so I'm just going to move this away. And then I'm going to have a new blank page. Ready to roll. And that's what I like to hear. You know when they give you like a chocolate bar and they're like, oh, this is great snack. And then you eat it and you're like, I needed like about three of these. That's how I feel. Okay. We are going to work on the other plates. So again, it's up to you if you want to have it on your phone to look at, if you want to look at the handout. You're the boss of you. I'm going to start with a line in the middle of my page. This is again, not very necessary. We're not doing the splits of the other circles. And I should have just said five minutes instead of five to 10. So in case you're still taking your break, I am gonna do this step very slowly. All right. And then I want to draw a slightly bigger circle than the one that we did. So I'm gonna go to nine, nine centimeters. Ta -ta -ta. And that will fill my page. Okay, maybe I filled it too much because I want a border. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna reduce that radius two centimeters. Reduce, 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 reduce. Two centimeters, two centimeter reduce. And then another circle. So we have our nice border. Trying to make it as dark as possible. Okay. I'm going to write oops, the radius. R9. And this one is R7. Okay. There we go. Locked focus. Ish. Ish. Okay. So, have you guys got your circles? Are we ready? Are we ready to draw? I'm gonna take that as yes, yes we are. There is a starting point in these plates. So I'm gonna go from my middle point here I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. This is the unscientific uh, way of finding your vertical line. So previously, we've done the right way of the vertical line. Now you could just assess it. Why? Because with this one, we don't have the symmetry. So it doesn't matter. We can literally do any side that we want. And in this middle point, we are going to do the starting point. And it's like, leaves. We have five leaves that are going to be my starting point. So here I am drawing five leaves however I want to draw them. 
So take that as your permission to do them however you draw leaves. So you can add your own personality into the plate that you're creating. Okay, so two of the leaves are pointing to that direction to the right or maybe the left, I don't know. Um, and the way I'm looking at it, it's to the right, but I don't know how it's looking on your screen. And then I have two other leaves. So this middle one is the longest one. And I have two other leaves. that I'm adding in there. And one more. Okay, so just making my leaves a bit pretty. And then, because it's a composition, a full composition on its own, there is no symmetry. So we are relying on the direction of the sun. I don't know if you noticed this when you were looking at the plates, it looked like the flowers were all looking at something. This something is the sun. And you can see it. I don't know if you noticed it in your own plants. If you left your, say you had a windowsill and you left your plant in one space, you didn't move it, nothing happened. It keeps going to one certain direction towards the sun. And sometimes you have to kind of tilt your plant so the other side can also get some sun. So that's the deal with these flowers. But we have two, well, three of the flowers that were blown by the wind. So they're not exactly going to the sun, okay? And now we're gonna go with the direction of the circle. So everything we're drawing, we are drawing from the left side in a curve and going upwards. How many flowers do we have that are stemming? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, you can do 15 or you can do more or less, it's up to you. So I'm going to start with the side flower right here and it's going all the way, almost to the edge, to the edge of my plates. And then I'm following, I'm following my round circle. So if your hand just randomly decides to unfollow, erase and follow. Okay. So we're gonna start by doing all the lines at once. So this is line number one. And I have a little one, I have a tiny flower that's just almost, it's like escaping, escaping from the little bush that I have down there. And it faces to this side. So this one has been blown by the wind. Okay. Otherwise it would have been too staged. So this is a messy representation of life. Sometimes you get blown off your direction, even if you want to face the sun. Very poetic. I could be completely making this up as well. Okay, and then behind this, there is another kind of branching off, also following the same direction. And it's going, oh, it's even surpassing this one. It's going all the way up. So this is my third one. <laughs> Nabina, thank you. I appreciate that you appreciate my depth. <laughs> That's true, Abigail. It is really fun to draw that movement. Okay, so I've done those two. This one, there is another one that has been moving, of course, by the wind. And you will notice in the handout, there are some arrows in the first, in like step one. Okay, then there is another one coming to the side here and it just stops short. 
And then I'm going upwards again. And this I'm going all the way to the top. Sometimes it helps when you draw the line in two parts as I've just done. So I knew that I could do my top one in a really even curve. And again there, and then I kind of connected them. So try and work with your hand with whatever feels more comfortable when you are drawing. And then I'm going upwards. And then another flower. This is almost kind of like the middle point. Again, it goes all the way. And then I have a smaller one next to it. I might miss some um, by the end without knowing that I did. So in, in that case, that's absolutely fine. The one that's slightly curved going the other direction. <clears throat> then a, a longer one that's going upwards. One that has gone slightly the other direction as well. And that's going towards the sun. And notice how all these flowers are kind of like really nicely curved within the plate. And I have one that's just shorter and one that's tiny. Have you noticed that the flowers are in different stages of growth as well? Some of them are fully open, some of them are just sprouting. And I feel like there are two types of flowers in on this plate. You know, the blue flower is, the flower head is quite different from the bigger open red one. So I feel like there are two different species of flowers. So, when you are doing these kind of flowers, you can just commit to just one type of a flower and just do it in all the different growth stages, or you could have number of them. Just notice that this leaf should be going inwards. I mean, it's not a big deal, but just wanted to correct it. Okay, so should we work from the opposite direction now, or should we stick to the same direction? Would it confuse you if we change it? Because I feel like this is just telling me to draw it. Like, draw me, move first. Okay, I'll listen to the flower. So with this flower, it's this is how we are perfect. I am glad you agree, because that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, with this one, well, actually, with all the flowers, they have like a little stem and the, <laughs> yes, and the little stem is like, it looks like a U or like a little tiny cup that's holding the flower. Mine is a bit wider. Let's make it a very small U. Or a C, actually, C in that direction. And then this one, because it's kind of like a bud, it has something interesting. So it has like a leaf on the side, then a leaf right in the middle, like a long thin one, then kind of like another leaf, like a silhouette leaf that's going there. And then inside of it, we have this short little bud. Okay, so that was my first one. So you have like an elongated um, leaf on this side, then a middle one, and then on the other side. It's kind of like a tulip that shriveled and is about to die, but it's actually the beginning of the flower. Again, another metaphor, very poetic plate. 
And then here, how many pixels do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have the flower here that will have eight petals. So I'm going to start with the center, little circle for my center. And then my petals here are going to almost look like a heart, but not a deep um, thing into the heart. So it's like, this is a heart, right? But it's not going to be a proper heart. It is just going to be like a little bend, it's like almost like, an M that got squashed. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, this is too hearty. Six, seven, and then eight. My petals are too long. Their petals are a bit shorter. So you can shorten them up or just leave them as they are. Okay. And then we have this one moved by the wind. Oh, the thing we didn't do here is the little stem. I forget, they're like literally for every flower they have like a little stem. Okay. Oh, no worries, Asya. Hopefully you'll catch up with the recording and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, here we're going to do the same one as the first one, the one that is like kind of growing. And it starts with a stem. And then you have like the, it's like almost like hands are holding it. And the leaf in the middle, then Another one. Okay, and then inside of it, we also have the bud. And now we have a serious one here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, kind of like seven, eight. So with this one, we start with an oval instead of a circle. So it's like a squashed circle because it's like to the side of it. And from the top, we have one, two, three, four, five. A small curvy little petals. So one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna go to the other side and do five sure it's kind of like flat and then from there from the other side we're going to do seven <clears throat> so one two three four five six seven and don't forget the little stem <clears throat> I feel like they are marigolds, but my knowledge in flowers are not 100%, but this is literally how, what I thought when I saw them. I was like, these look like marigolds. So they might look, they could be, they could be. Okay, and then next to it, I'm back to a blue flower. Oh, well, would you look at that? They alternate. One blue, one red, one blue, one red. Doesn't it remind you when you were in school? Do they love me? Do they not? Do they love me? Do they not? When you like take the thing, the petals away? No, those are only Saudi schools. No, my, my niece did it and she's like UK school, so. Oh, it could be carnations as well. Oh, I like that, Anissa. Thank you. Yeah, Nabila, that's what I remembered. They are fully bloomed roses. If you notice their leaves and the buds, 
I mean, I think our mind, you can decide. You can decide if they're roses or marigolds. To me, I look at them and I'm like, ooh, red flower or blue flower. So, but it could be discussion for thoughts. Oh, thank you, Samra. <clears throat> oh, very good. All right. So since we have figured out they are, they alternate, I'm going to do all the blue ones and then come back to the red ones. Okay. So I have a blue one here. So I'm starting right there with my circles and I have like my little bud and my eight petals. One, two, three, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then, oh, it's, it's one of the, the high ones, the high ones. And my line is a bit too long. So here, start with a center and then add a little bud, not bud, um, stem. And then I do my petals, the eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna squish eight because I did one of them quite large. Lynn Rose, how are you? Okay, I'm curious. I know many Ottoman flowers were based um, partially on real flowers and other invented. What is your opinion? Well, that is 100% true. So a lot of the flowers are based on real flowers. The thing why sometimes they look invented is because they're really stylized. So when you're stylized a flower, you kind of lose the quality that makes it real. Plus the... I don't like my petals, I'm going to redo them. Um, plus the angle of the flowers. So when we look at our flowers, our eyes look at them from a certain angle. A lot of these flowers are um, taken from the bird's eye, eye view. So when a bird is flying on top and looking at these flowers, this is the view that we draw a lot of the time in Ottoman and Persian flowers. So I hope that kind of answered it. But yeah, some little tiny flowers, it feels like they are just space fillers. So it wasn't imperative for them to actually make it anything special. I just noticed that the quality, how I draw my petals is very elongated. Theirs is a bit like shorter and filled. Okay, one more blue flower all the way in the end. So circle, stem, and then my eight petals. Also, it would help actually to compare the number of petals to some real flowers to see if they are similar. Because in botanical drawings, a lot of them are really accurate. So it will be interesting to make the comparison. I don't know the real answer to this, but in a research way, I think it will be really fun to try and find out what the real answer is. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And also, by the way, the longer I keep drawing the same shape, not the more it becomes the same, the more my hand becomes like, oh yeah, we know, we know. We, we get the gist, so it changes slightly. All right, should we do all the buds now? I think let's do all the buds. We have two buds that are like almost just about to reopen, um, well, to actually open, and they lost the leaves around them, so that we have one here, and then it has like kind of pointed leaves, create any number of points. Okay, so I did one here and we have 
Oh, this really tiny one here. It's tiny. And then we have the other buds that have the shriveled tulips around them. So one. Three with the inner bud. Then I have this one again. Start with the stem. It's like a dance, they're almost like dancing. And your homework will be. When the Leeson House Museum opens, you're gonna visit in October and go sketch out all the other plates. That is, that's it. Ooh, we might have to do it in person then. Okay, so I have, have one more bud kind of snuggled right here in the space. That would be amazing. So the plates are in the dining room. So we'll try and arrange a field trip. We'll do that. We'll just do a drawing, a drawing trip because they're like planning events and stuff. So on their website, they have it in the what's on. And I definitely saw something for October. All right. Now the maybe marigold, maybe roses are um, left. Oh, why do I have one? Oh yeah, it's a really little tiny one. I'm gonna start with the tiniest one. So it's a tiny one. I'm gonna start with the top, which is like an oval shape. And then one, two, three, four. And the other ones, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then I'm gonna do it here as well. I kind of move my line, not my line, my flower body, like a little bit more curved because I feel like it's too, too close to the other one. And in about a whole minute, we're gonna start painting. And this is when I ask you, actually not a minute, we still have leaves to draw. Um, when I ask you, which plate would you prefer us to paint? So I'm gonna take the first five votes. So write one or two in the chat and then I will just follow that. One and two, ooh, right away, it's a tie. Ooh, it's gonna be difficult. Am I gonna have to make a decision? Okay, I'm gonna count them in a second. Um, and by the way, I kind of gave up on doing like seven of these. So I just did any number that my heart desired. Okay, one more. I'm gonna count them in a second. Let's see, let's see what the majority has told me. The border of this plate has literally two flowers that are repeated across. So you could do that by doing the tracing paper technique. So you could just draw one and then trace the rest of them around. <clears throat> the other thing that tells me that the other than the color of the flowers that they're different is their leaf as well. 
So the blue flower leaf is really nice, elongated and smooth, where the red flowers leaf is like a little jaggedy, which is actually quite close to the rose leaf. So it could have been a rose. So again, I'm going to start from the opposite direction. The first direction we started with, and I'm just going to place my leaves. For the leaves, I'm just again drawing them how my hand draws leaves. So if you want like a super accurate, exactly as the drawing, um, you can look at the original plates. I'm also going to look at the spaces that I have between my flowers and decide where to put the leaves based on my space because mine is not an exact replica. So I have different spaces in, in different directions. So here I'm adding the leaf. I'm not making it a jaggedy leaf, but I'm making it slightly wider. So you can still see that these two are different from each other. And I love doing leaves, different leaves of all kinds. It's just really fun. And there is not a real rule or like, a rule of thumb in terms of like, oh, how many leaves would they add? But it seems like they do at least two, just kind of like fill up the space. And leaves are a great way of filling the space. Oh, I'm glad you agree. Um, here we have two smaller ones. Try and like give each one a space. So you see how I lifted mine a little bit more because I already have one here. And then here, I'm gonna put it kind of coming from underneath. And I'll give it one here because I have that space. And then back to the thicker rose ones. And in this, you can really play with the placement and what's overlaying what. Like some of them are behind, some of them can be in front. And that could give it a really nice quality when you're painting. And it looks more natural because in nature, nothing is like super organized in a way. It's like you don't go into a garden and every flower is arranged exactly the same. Okay, give these little leaves. This one, give it tiny leaves here. Give it mm, medium, medium leaves. You see my direction changes a little bit. My, the thickness of the leaf changes. Where it's stemming from changes. It's just, it is a little fun thing. Like here I have so much more space, so I'm making it much larger. All right. So this is my leafy, my leafy one. Okay, let's count. One, 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 one. and one. Okay, we've got five ones. And then two, 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 two. Oh. It's a tie. Okay. Who wants to be the deciding vote? I'll give you the power. Power to the people. Um, I don't know. Convince me which one do you guys want to paint? But we have to decide like within the next minute. Oh, ooh, we got we got votes for two. People have taken it. Ellen. Oh, you're breaking the tie as well. Okay. I might end up painting a tiny bit of each just to make people happy. Let's start with this plate uh, because mine is right 
on my watercolor paper. If, you, if yours is not on watercolor paper, then I want you to trace it and then transfer it into watercolor paper. But whatever you have, I think it will be nice to kind of paint a little bit. And then we can again paint exactly as as I have it, or this is my clean slash dirty water. We can paint it exactly like they did. It's a classic green, blue, and white. Or we can go wild and paint paint in gold. And I feel like I want to paint a little bit in gold. And so the great thing is they don't have any special shading technique. So, which is great. Like literally paint it with any color you want. Like it makes no difference. I'm going to do golden leaves everywhere. There isn't actually a song, I just made it up. Oh, I'm glad you agree with the gold. In a perfect world, I'm not gonna have this much pencil lines. Um, my pencil will definitely be so much less, but is our world perfect? No. Okay. Um, black ink outlining will cover a lot of the pencil. Yes, that is a really good point. Am I going to outline? I don't think so. Well, not on this piece, maybe in future ones I will. But usually when you are doing two coats of paint, you should cover most things or multiples. You can also decide to paint a background, which will be really nice. You can leave it exactly as it is, just like a white background, or you can do like a dark blue. You can add paint like washes. So you can like make a wash of like a really light color and still let your pencil line kind of peek through as a style. That is absolutely up to you. Cats, do you paint on top of the pencil marks? In a perfect world, I would have um, traced this and transferred my tracing. And in my transfer, although it is pencil transfer, it won't be as dark and messy as this. It will be much lighter. So it's like when you're painting on top of it, it doesn't show that it's pencil marks. There is also, I've seen artists um, who have the erasers, you know, that little gray squishy eraser and they go around their pencil marks and then they kind of erase most of the marks and they have like really, really faint line that they are painting. So that is also an option. The watercolors I use are the ones I make. So I'm using the Gold Luster from Bristle and Brush, my own brand. You could literally use any watercolor. It's like, it becomes really personal preference after a point with watercolor. And so get what you can afford to start painting. Don't let this be the thing that holds you back. And then get the really nice ones as you progress. Oh, I just put my hand right on my gold. So what have you guys decided to paint your leaves with? Are you going with blue, with gold? 
Let me know in the chats. And I will take a look in just a second. I'm on a mission of trying to finish all my leaves because I want to kind of take a quick look at what you guys painted as well. So we could look at what you've done. Okay, so we've got gold like me, yay! I am glad. And if you kind of really enjoy these flowers and you just want to do a whole bunch of other flowers, I have a free um, <clears throat> patterns on islamiculumination.com that you could just download. They, if you go into the website, islamiculumination.com, um, there is a thing that says start here right at the top and you can go into it and go scroll down to the golden flower challenge some of you have already done it and you've done beautiful results but it just gives you something to kind of look at there's so many templates i've been so it's been six years that we've done the the challenge so there's all the patterns from all the previous ones so there are about like 70 or more for the patterns that you could just take for free and paint in any way that you like. Okay, nearly done with my leaves. And I wanted to paint at least one of the flowers. Okay. Some lines are just too dark because I had to darken it for the screen. But when I'm drawing my own drawings, they're usually never this dark, so I can just easily paint on top of them. But you know what? It's quite fun to have that. It's a different quality. It's like rough and rugged type of illumination, which is a new thing because they never have it as stuff and look it. It's always so tidy. Abigail. Oh, I'm glad. You're very welcome. That's okay. I am very happy that you are. And the fun doesn't have to stop here, you know. You can, um, after the session, take it as your homework. Like, who needs dinner? And then you could just like paint all night. And by the time I wake up, you can send me all your paintings on Instagram. So if you're posting them, make sure that you tag me and tag Leighton House Museum, because I'm sure the team would love to see what you guys have been doing as well, especially that these plates are part of the collection. So you might get a little feature on their page, which is always nice. Okay, how many leaves do I have? Two more leaves. And again, the wonderful thing about these flowers, they're all solid color. So there's like tiny things where they painted it just slightly differently. All right, okay, let's see if this gold shines. Wait for it, woo, party. It's so shiny. Oh, thank you, Claudia, for the musing handle. Henna, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Yes, please, I would love to see it. That's absolutely all right. 
Oh, thank you, Nabila. I love seeing um, when you paint with the gold. So fun, you did like a video lately as well. That was really nice. All right, I'm gonna stop with my gold and then do the other color of the of the flowers. The blue flower <clears throat> has two things going on for it. So, so I have another blue. What blue is this? I don't know what blue that is. Not like cobalt blue or something. So with the blue one, it has a really lighter inside center and a much darker one. So I'm gonna lighten it a bit more. Okay. So the first one is really dark all over. So the thing is you can do two um, different colors where one of them is light and one of them is dark, or you can change the water um, amount that you put, like the ratio. So I'm kind of changing the ratio of the water so I don't have to change my paint. So I'll wait for this to dry and then go with the darker color to go around it. I'm going to do another one of these. I'll make the, the petals slightly lighter. Oh, thank you, Fatima. So you see, oh, I love this. Okay, this is much lighter. This is the thing that I was after. And then when it dries, I can outline my petals with the true color, which is not diluted. And then that gives me a really nice outline around it. And that is giving me the exact quality. Oh, turns out we've done all the blue flowers. <coughs> All right, with the red flowers, they have black outlining, outlining the petals. There is also a white border that is left. So it's like, instead of painting it white, I would say just leave that space white. And so let's see an example. So this is the red I'm using. So when I'm painting my petal, you see how I'm leaving space around it? So it kind of looks like a white border. And then when you outline it with black ink, then it looks perfect. And the center is actually blue. Okay, so you can just do it carefully. Bring that quality. Um, you can use a smaller brush if you are struggling for control as well. The buds are wonderful because they are literally just red red without anything else added to it. There we go. Very satisfying to paint these guys. See? Yeah. I love painting, so relaxing. And I keep saving um, images of flowers. I'm like, yes, I'm going to repaint this. 
because seeing flowers as an image is much easier to translate to a drawing rather than in real life, because in real life, it's a 3D thing. But on a picture, you have already done it into um, a 2D, so it's much easier. Thank you, Elizabeth. Sorry for people who voted for plate number one and we didn't get a chance to paint it. I shall attempt to paint it and post a photo for you so you can have an example. But if you're not sure about which colors to use, use the color scheme that has already been um, on the plate. So at least that kind of removes the pressure from like trying to figure out how to paint it. Uh, if you want something in gold, do the tree in gold. The blue flowers have red centers, by the way. And the red flowers have blue centers. Or like little tops. So you see how it's like I'm going with my dark paint. Right into the border. So it kind of gives it that lovely quality. All right. Oh, it's a good thank you. Eat Mubarak to you as well. So you have a choice of outlining if you want. With that, you need a fine brush and um, black ink rather than black watercolor. It's a little sad, but it's extremely rushed painting. I wanna do the plate all over again now. I shall. That could be my plan. Okay, I'm going to stop this um, share and I can at least, thank you. I can look at um, everyone's paintings if you guys want to show me. All right, gallery view. If you want to share your painting, get on the video um, and then we can see who can see your painting. No um, rush though. We only have um, how many minutes? Five. Oh. Zabina, I can see. Let's see. Um, wait, let me spotlight you. Pretty. Very nice. I like it. I don't know if you're saying something, but I'm glad you've done it. Oh, thank you guys so much. Who's falling asleep? Oh, is it? Is it really late for you? Oh, very nice. Okay, who else is going to show me? Just pick up your drawing and I will spotlight you. Oh, I'll come back to you, Letitia, in just a second. Oh, that's so pretty. You've done the border as well. Very proud. I like it. I look forward to seeing it painted. Letitia. Oh, you did the other one. Wait, wait, let's see. Oh, that's so pretty. So detailed. Your scales are so detailed. Mine were like, dish, 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 dish. Okay, I'm coming to you guys. I'm coming one by one. Oh, so nice. You're also working on the border. Look at those beautiful flowers. Very nice. Very proud. Do you want to show us the tree? 
I forgot that we even did the tree. I feel like it's been that long. Oh, it's so pretty. I like it. I see that you started on the background. Very nice. Oh, Abigail, I'm coming to you. Oh, nice flowers, you guys. You make me proud. Oh, very nice. I look forward to seeing a lot of these painted. I mean, not a lot of these. I mean, every single one of these. Okay. Ruth, were you showing me something? But yours is so blurry. I think, oh, it's because of, you put it right on your face. <laughs> Spotlight video. Because of your blurry background, it, it kind of like, do it on an angle, do it on a random angle. It might make it. Oh, yes. I saw a little bit. It's gone now. Oh, some parts show and some parts don't. I think you'll have to tag us on Instagram for us to see the flower. Jenna, I'm coming. Spotlight video. Oh, how pretty. It's so small. Is it the same radius? A little bit, a little bit. It looks really cute. Very nice. Um, I'm not going to pronounce your name correctly, so correct me. Epicheeks. Yeah, so almost, almost, actually, not even close. I'm spotlight you. Oh, how pretty. You've done the full plate. I love it. And I really like the border that you've done as well. Do you want to show us your other one too? Ooh. Look at those gorgeous flowers. Very nice pencil work. I like it. Very nice. Anyone else trying to show me something and I can't see you? Is that a yes? No, I think you guys, the ones who wanted to show me showed. Alessandra, did you show me yours? Hold on. I'm going to spotlight you. Ah, oh, pretty. And you have flowers behind you as well. So nice. Uh, I'm glad you're on brand. Very good. Very nice. Now I'm going to spotlight my face. There we go. Oh, thank you guys so much for joining me in today's class. I hope it wasn't very stressful at the beginning. Joanna, are we allowed a sneak peek of what we're doing in the next class or is it a secret? Well, 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 Joanna, great question. We are going to do one of the tiles they have there. I have two choices of tiles and I haven't made up my mind, but one of, well, I think we're definitely doing a six pointed star and the social media team is going to share it, I think few days from now. So it's not a total secret, but it's a really pretty tile. I'll try and decide. I couldn't decide, they're both really pretty. So both of them will be good. Thank you so much, everyone. And I shall see you next week. Next Thursday, Thursday? That was like Tuesday and Thursday. I'll see you next Thursday. And Eid Mubarak to everyone who's celebrating. Amazing evening to everyone who is just chilling. And tag us, um, tag me on at Islamic Illumination and the Leighton House Museum. Also tag them, there is their handle somewhere in the chat. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Bye.